In this video, I'm going to talk about modified Bessel functions. And modified Bessel functions are easy to understand if you remember trig, because modified Bessel functions are related to ordinary Bessel functions in almost exactly the same way that hyperbolic trig functions like sinh and cosh are related to ordinary trig functions like sine and cosine. Uh, so let's, uh, let's go through and make things a little bit more precise. So with sine and cosine, we know that they satisfy uh, the differential equation given by d squared y dx squared plus y equals zero, okay? Uh, this we know is solved by sine and cosine, okay? What about sinh and cosh? So if we wanna uh, go from this to sinh and cosh, then what we do is we take x and we transform it to i times x. So we're taking this x, which is sort of the real axis, and we're, we're rotating it onto this imaginary axis. And when we do that, what happens is that this original differential equation, d squared y dx squared, uh, this dx squared gets an extra minus sign because of the i, and we are left with, we're left with d squared y dx squared minus y equals zero. And this is solved by sinh x and cosh x. And since the only difference between these two equations is that we multiplied this x by an i, then these two solutions we expect to be related in, in sort of a similar way. In fact, what we find is that sine of i x is equal to i sinh of x and cosine of i x is equal to cosh cosh of x. Okay, so we see then that uh, to understand sinh and cosh, it's sufficient to understand sine and cosine. Okay, uh, what about Bessel functions? So for Bessel functions, uh, we have Bessel's differential equation that is x squared d squared y dx squared plus x dy dx plus x squared minus n squared y equals zero. And this is solved by Bessel functions of the first and second kind, jn of x and yn of x, yn of x. Okay, now we repeat the same process as we did in the trig case. So uh, we take x here, x, we have it go to ix, and then what happens? So this first term right here isn't gonna change because we have an x squared on top and a dx squared on bottom. Uh, so that doesn't change. Uh, same thing for this middle term. But then for this last term, for this last term we have, a, we have an x squared right here. And so that x squared is going to become minus x squared. And so we have minus x squared minus n squared y equals zero. Okay. So this is our modified Bessel equation. We got it from taking x from the original Bessel equation and having it go to ix. Okay, so now that we have this equation, what are the solutions to this? Well, the solutions to this are uh, modified Bessel's functions. We have uh, the modified Bessel function of the first kind, i sub n of x, and the modified Bessel function of the second kind, k sub n of x. Okay, so all that's left is to figure out how these are related to ordinary Bessel functions. And it's really a matter of convention. And so the convention that people choose is to say that uh, I sub n, I sub n of x is equal to uh, some constant e to the minus i n pi over two times j sub n of i x. So there's our j sub n sub uh, of i x, which we sort of expect intuitively. Uh, and then k sub n of x, this is equal to, and now this one's a little strange. This is, uh, this is equal to pi over two e to the i n pi over two times i j n of i x minus y n of i x. So this is a, these are two perfectly valid, valid linearly independent solutions to the modified Bessel's equation, right? We have, we have j n of i x and y n of i x. So this is linearly independent, that's fine. 
Uh, what's strange, though, is that it doesn't exactly follow the same logic as in the trig case, right? In the trig case, we just took we took our first solution and our second solution, threw an I in there, and then calls, called those our new solutions, cinch and cosh. In this case, we're doing that with uh, our Bessel function of the first kind, right? So we have J in here, and that's that goes directly over to our modified Bessel function of the first kind. But this modified Bessel function of the second kind is a little weird, right? We're looking at this strange linear combination of solutions instead of just uh, y sub n of i x. And there are a couple reasons for this. And the, the main reason is that this kn right here has some really special properties, especially when it comes to integrals. And in the next video, I'm going to start exploring uh, these properties in a little bit more detail. Uh, so I hope to see you there.